Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, and I'm here with Aaron. And I'm Aaron, and I am here to ask Dr. Rob some questions about implants and get some very real answers. So today's question is, short versus long implants, when do you use them? Does it matter? Is there actually a difference? You know, uh, I, this is really one that we should probably have Dr. Bobby in the conversation. I, you know, uh, we like to kid, you know, does length matter, right? And uh, the, the answer is it does, but it's a little, it takes a little bit of a background story to explain when it matters because it doesn't always matter. And thus we see in the last decade, the invention of a lot of short implants that have been brought to market by our, our dental implant companies. And so uh, the problem is uh, that there are people out there that are saying short implants work. And if you're not listening carefully, what you hear is short implants work, and then you think they work everywhere in the mouth. And the problem is that uh, a short implant is a, is a lovely solution, especially if you can get one with a wider diameter. So uh, like if a, in a first molar, to avoid a sinus lift, you can place, say, a 6 millimeter or a 7.5 millimeter length in a wide body, something 5 millimeters or maybe bigger in diameter. And the reason you want that diameter is because it increases the surface area of the implant, more thread space, more thread length, and that means you've got a better interface with the, the bone to implant contact. But the length thing becomes this. If you place an implant that's a short implant and you place it in like a first molar position, if the loads are axially loaded, if the implant is loaded axially, so you have a very good centric stop over your, over your implant and your implant is right over your, your pros, rather, and it process directly over your implant such that when you take a PA, the crown looks like a heart, okay? If you have that, it'll work probably forever. Like, you'll never have a complication at all. The, the, the situation arises is if you use a short implant and you don't get the implant in the ideal prosthodontic-driven protocol position, that's a lot of words. But if you don't get the implant in the right location, when you build the pros and you look at a PA or a bite wing of that pros, and it doesn't look like a heart, now it looks like an ET or it looks like a Snoopy. If the pros looks like either of those, the short implant is a very, very big danger. It's a, it's a huge danger risk. And it comes from the fact that the implant then will act like a lever and it will resist bending moments. And so a longer implant will resist bending moments better. And thus, if you said to me, if I was going to place an implant in the maxillary central position, and you said, Doc, I, I have a new implant I've brought to market, and it's 4.2 millimeters in diameter, and it's six millimeters long, and you, so you can put it in the first molar, the first, in the, in, in the um, central location. I would say, not in my patients, okay? And that's because in, in a maxillary central tooth, you're never going to be able to load that axially because the mandibular teeth approach the maxillary teeth from the lingual. So if there's ever a piece of food between there it, at all, it's going to create a bending moment on the implant. And thus, short implants are, are not indicated in the anterior uh, single units by themselves because you're not going to have the resistance to the bending forces. That's where your longer implants are going to go. So what I tell people is maximize your length that you can for your location, always avoiding vital structures. So stay two millimeters away from your, from your, from your nerves, say a millimeter or two away from the floor of your sinus, and you'll be in great shape. But maximize the length. Don't just go with a short implant because you can because you want to maximize it because you never know when there's going to be an off-axis load. And if you have a short implant, it's going to pull it out of the bone easier than it would be with a long one. If you don't understand this concept, just think about if you were putting fence posts in the ground and you put a fence post in the ground and some fence posts you only put with the, the fence post goes in the ground only six inches deep, six inches, like, uh, the, the, like the width of your hand deep. And then you've got other fence posts that you put like three feet deep. 
Okay, and then you tie the fence to it, and then somebody runs into the fence, like a cow. A cow runs into the fence, okay? Which fence post is going to get pulled out of the ground easier? The one that's only a few inches in the ground, right? It's just intuitive to know that that would change. Now, if you have a fence post and it's only a few inches in the ground, and then on top of it, you put a cinder block, and then you have another fence post, and it's three feet in the ground, and on top of it, you put a cinder block, they're both going to be perfectly happy. So the, the load is directly on top of both of those fence pens, fence, uh, pe <laughs> fence posts, say that fast three times, and, and because of that, they're going to be okay. It's when you have a load from the side, when the cow leans up against the fence post, that's when the one that's not deep just falls right over. And the same thing happens in the mouth. For, for the length, it's often an issue in areas where you cannot ensure that the load is only going to be axially. From a from a non expert's perspective, it almost seems like that would be most situations that you'd have an unexpected force. You know, if someone's if someone's chewing and something kind of hits at a weird angle, or they accidentally grind their teeth, or they're playing sports, is that is that true? Is that a concern? It, it would be a concern, but I would be more inclined to think that the concern would be tooth to tooth contact. So if you have um, Ideal occlusion, ideal occlusion, ideal implant placement with a prosthodontic driven protocol. So your implant is under your imp underneath your crown in an ideal manner. And you have a centric load. So the forces are directly over that implant when it's tooth to tooth. It's possible that you could have an eccentric uh, uh, force in a sports event, in some parafunction, during chewing, biting on a, on a jawbreaker. All of these things could do that. But those things, if, if limited to a small number, should be fine. If you don't have the centric load and you have a, a prematurity or an excursion on your on your tooth to tooth interface, you're going to ensure that you have these deleterious forces being applied to the to the implant every single moment of the day, every day. And then that leads us nicely into our concepts of the fatigue failure. Uh, so that's where you run the risk. It's, it's not the one-offs, because we're always going to have the one-offs, and but it's with the day in and day out, constantly bending an implant, which is not meant to be bent. So I'll, I'll say it again. Implants are not meant to be bent. Uh, from an engineering perspective, an implant is a screw, and a screw is not designed to be bent, okay? So you don't want to bend your implants, and you get bending of implants when you don't get the implant underneath the tooth where you need it. And when the loads are not, when the occlusion is not managed properly and the loads are hitting on interfaces, um, interferences rather, and creating these off axis loads that create bending moments. And this will fail in a heartbeat. So this, this will loosen a pros screw in, in a matter of weeks. It, it will break a, 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 an abutment screw in a matter of weeks. It'll break uh, your prosthetic solution. Uh, and and if you're not careful, it can cause failure of your implant. You can you can fr fracture your implant. Wow. So yes, all really bad things that can be developed from not not heeding to this concept. So yeah, maximize length up to the point where you where you're not hitting vital structures every single time. Pretty straightforward. I like rules that are easy to follow. Yeah, me too. Uh, keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. And that leads us into. Well, that's been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, out.